Welcome back YouTube to my channel. I'm the 3D Guy, where I cover features in 3D modeling programs and try cramming them into as small a video as possible. So we are going to be covering lofts in Fusion 360 today. Um, really, really cool feature. One that I'm surprised I have it's taken so long for me to actually cover. It's going to first prompt you to find the loft. It's just right here. We'll click on that, and it's going to prompt you to click on profiles. You need at least two profiles for it to work. So we're just going to start with this one over here. And one of the cool things I really like about lofts is you can kind of guide how that loft is, is transferring from one profile to the next. And so we have these connection points, and you can actually grab onto them and move them around. And you can see right now that it's moving that loft along that path, which is really, really cool. So you can't see it right now, but it's actually twisting that, that circle to the smaller circle up on top. And you'll definitely see it on these other features. Um, something you can also control is the connection point. And so if it's just a normal connect, it's just going to kind of loft straight to it. But if you use the direct, it really adds a lot more customizability to it. And so you have this height that you can increase. And you can see that the connection is actually a perpendicular connection. Uh, unless you can actually change that input with this angle. So you can really, really do some fun things there. And you can also change those inputs right here and right here for the height and angle. Chain selection. Uh, in this case, it's not going to do anything because it's a circle. But for these hexagons, if you click on chain selection, it's going to select everything in the profile. Whereas if you don't, it'll only select one. Closed. Closed kind of just turns off all of the customized features. It doesn't really make any difference if you move things around. It's just going to be a general loft. Frankly, I don't know why they have that tab there, but they do. Um, angled edges. Uh, sorry, tangent edges. Tangent edges is if you do have a rounded edge, um, it kind of just can change it from being a, a single face or it can break them all up into different faces. Um, like as you can see right here, you can actually see that it has this little edge as if you've had a... Um, a fillet added, or you can just have the whole thing one single face. And then you have the normal operations for a new body, join, cut, intersect, new component. All right, so we're just going to click OK there. Might as well leave the cool version. All right. Next, we are going to talk about guide rails and, and how to use them and why they're important. So we're going to go to loft. We're going to select the two profiles. And now in this area, we have our rails. We can choose the normal rails or we can choose a center line. Center line, it's exactly what it sounds like. I've already drawn this little curve and you can see that it's following that loft, is following that center line. Um, still, one of my favorite things about lofts is you have all of these different lines that you can, or these uh, points that you can work with. And you can see that it's changing the geometry of this loft, almost making it look like a, uh, a um, piece of licorice or a drill almost. So yeah, really, really cool stuff that you can do by by moving these points and by using the center line. It almost looks like, a, it almost works similar to a sweep, but slightly different. And so we'll just click OK on that one. This last one, I didn't add the, um, the actual rails because I wanted to add them while showing the, this feature. Um, so for this last one, we want the rails, they need to be touching the outside of each of these sketches. And so we're going to use a, in the Create tab, we're going to go down to Project Include, and we're going to do Intersect. And so you can actually see where as we click on these lines, we have this red dot appearing, which is showing the point of intersect between these lines and the plane. So we'll click OK. Now we know for sure that as we click on the spline, we're hitting on those points. And so we'll do it one more. And there we go. So we're finished sketch. So we know for sure that these are, are actually in, in contact with those lines. So we'll do our last loft. And another cool thing about lofts is you can do as many profiles as you want. And so you can really, really add a lot. With the rails, we're going to do the plus sign, click on that, add another rail, click on that. And you can see it's worked its way around those rails that we've included. So really, really cool. You can really customize shapes with a loft. But that's it. That's that's really all there is to lofts. Uh, if you found this video helpful, please hit that subscribe button. If you have any questions, comments, please leave them down below. I, I've really been enjoying answering the questions that people have, as well as requests. If you have any requests for features or um, just any general questions about the program, 
please leave them down the below. Again, I am having SolidWorks. Uh, I'm going to be starting doing videos for that in the next few weeks. I'm super excited, so definitely keep watching, and thanks again for all the support.